She'd like to know what um, the Quran says regarding the treatment of women because of the fact that there's obviously in the world today uh, some mistreatment of women in Muslim countries. Uh, on one count, I say to you, this is correct. Uh, I have visited at, uh, about 23 countries that have major Muslim populations, and in some of those countries, I have found that to be the case. Mistreatment of women based upon culture, not based upon Islam, based upon the culture of people. What the Quran says is that يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ تَكُوا رَبُّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ And I'll recite the Arabic and then translate it for you. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَ مِنْهُ رَجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَتَكُوا اللَّهُ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَكِيبًا The Quran says, and this is one verse, O mankind, give reverence to your guardian Lord, Almighty God, who created you from one single soul. So the first position that God says to us is that he created male and female from what? One single soul. And created its mate. So created Adam and created his mate. From what? One soul. And from those two, a countless number of men and women. Then he says, you should fear God or be mindful of God and his legislation as regards to the demands that you make of one another. This means the demands that's made between the husband and wife or the people who are together. That means the basis of their relationship should be the legislation of God, not the legislation of men. And you should give reverence to the wombs that bore you life. Who is that? The mothers. So in this verse, God is telling us two things. One, that the relationship between the male and the female, in terms of their essence, they are equal in the sight of God. That's number one. Equal in the sight of God. We don't say the same. They're not, evidently not the same. I mean, in the Western world, we are led to think that they are the same, and some men and women are undergoing operations to become the same. <laughs> but they are not the same. The male and the female are not the same psychologically, they're not the same physiologically, and they don't have the same social roles, but they are equal in the sight of God. Then God goes on to say, fear Allah by whom you demand from each other your rights. So God says, be mindful of his legislation and his justice by whom you demand your rights. Right? What kind of rights? Marital rights, here it means. My rights as a husband doesn't originate from me. And my wife's rights as a woman, as a female, or as a wife, doesn't originate from herself. I'm not the one that gives her her rights. She's not the one that gives me my rights. The one that gives both of us our rights is the legislation of God. But then God says on top of that, for us men, to give reverence to the wombs that gave you life. Who is the wombs that gave us life? Our mothers. And if we reverence our mothers, we have to reverence our sisters. If we reverence our sisters, we have to reverence our wives and our daughters because all of them inevitably will be mothers. The other thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered for us and outlined for us all the rights the rights of inheritance, the rights of treatment, the rights of worship, the specific roles. God says in the Quran, Men are the maintainers, the protectors of women. What this basically means is that in Islam, the woman doesn't have to work. She doesn't have to earn a living for herself. She doesn't have to. The husband cannot order her to wash the dishes, wash the clothes, iron his clothes, fix his food. He, he can't order her to do anything. But God has ordered him, on the contrary, to maintain her. And she doesn't have to work at all. Because God said, al al -nisa. But God has given to the women 
one of the gravest tasks. One is one they cannot avoid unless they take their uterus out, and that is having children. That is the task that God has given to women, to bear children. Now, that, that doesn't mean that is their only task, but that is a task they cannot avoid. And that task of having children, men certainly couldn't do it, even if they wanted to. If a man tried to have a child, he would die. <laughs> and if he did have a child, psychologically, he would never be able to deal with children the way that women do. But God has given the women the capacity to have children, to take care of those children, and in many cases, take care of their husband, themselves, and other people's children, because they have the psychological capacity to do that. This is the gift that God gave to women. To be what? To be the hands that rock the cradle of civilization. All prophets had mothers. And all prophets were children at one time and they were nurtured by their mothers. So in Islam, the position of a woman is that of sensitivity, one of sanctity. Now, if there are Muslims who don't respect women because of their culture, whether it's Arab culture, whether it is Asian culture, whether it is African culture, or there is American culture, any other culture, that is not an indictment against Islam. That's an indictment against those Arabs or those Africans or those Asians or those who disrespect women. But let's bring this issue up. Let me bring up this issue. As a sociologist, because my academic background is that As a sociologist, there are a few statistics I want to share with you relative to the treatment of women. Now, you know, in the Western civilization, you know, we're always talking about how sophisticated we are, uh, how um, principled we are, how educated we are, how civilized that we are, and therefore we want to go throughout the world straightening out everybody else's uh, human injustices. But let's talk about the injustice. I'm going to give you a few statistics that might suggest that in Western civilization, there's a few fires that need to be put out before people start going other places putting out fires. Between the USA and the UK, I don't have the statistics for Australia, but I'm sure they would also be interesting to know. There are between the USA and the UK 357,000 legal abortions every year. This means individuals who chose, in most cases, of course in some extraordinary cases it might have resulted, a pregnancy might have came through rape, because that's another statistic I'm going to share with you. But in most cases, pregnancy that occurred as a result of the choice of two individuals who afterwards decided, maybe one of them decided, but decided afterwards they didn't want that child. So they aborted that child. And today, over 357,000 unwanted children are aborted anywhere between the fourth week and the eighth week of pregnancy. And those are children, those are human beings. We know now from an embryological study that those are human beings. Yet they are killed and they are murdered because the human beings who entered this relationship decided that they don't want that responsibility, so they kill it so that they don't have to face that responsibility. That is an indecency. That is an immorality. That is a great oppression, not only against women, but against those children. And what kind of a psychology does that create for women who have, in the West, most women before, before they are 30 years old in the Western Hemisphere, they said that three out of 10 women between the USA and UK, three out of 10 have at least two abortions before they're 30 years old. 
The other thing is, the Western countries that claim to be the champions of social justice and the freedom and liberation of women, they are the ones who promote and license 24 million women who prostitute themselves. Can you imagine that? 24 million women between the USA and the UK who have licenses to prostitute. Another 83 million that dance in nightclubs naked for men who just go there for their enjoyment. Does that sound like a civilized place? Does that sound like a civilized society? Does that sound like a society that has in their hearts the humanity for women? Every 39 seconds in America and the UK, every 39 seconds a woman is raped, forcibly raped. Seven out of ten of those rapes are never investigated. Four out of ten never even reported. Now I ask, when you think about the so-called inhumanity towards women in Afghanistan and the inhumanity towards women in Saudi Arabia and the inhumanity towards women in India or Africa or Somalia or wherever else that we want to liberate these women from, do these same statistics exist? Absolutely not. I would argue, I've come back from Morocco recently, the level of prostitution in Morocco by, two, by seven people I spoke to was like running at 80% of young women are prostitutes. Yeah, I would agree with you, excuse me, I would agree with you when it comes to Morocco, but I didn't name Morocco. No, you just, <laughs> at, at this moment, I didn't name Morocco. No, no, it's not a Muslim country at all. Okay, the countries that we are preoccupied today with liberating about the issue of uh, uh, oppression against women is not Morocco. The countries that we are engaged in trying to liberate and talk about oppression against women today, the countries that are spoken about are Afghanistan, the country that is spoken about is Saudi Arabia, the spoke country that is spoken about is Pakistan and India. These are the countries that are commonly spoken about. Now, Morocco has long since been a haven for drugs, prostitution, but I remind you that Morocco was colonized by, the, by Portugal and Spain and they brought prostitution and drugs into Morocco. So I agree with you, I've been there, but that's not the preoccupation in the countries that we're talking about. Now let me use those few countries that are commonly pointed at. The Afghani women. Did any Afghani women themselves ask America to come there and liberate them? Absolutely not. They didn't. Did any Saudi women, I'm not talking about the ones that escaped from Saudi Arabia, and maybe rightfully so, but did women in Saudi Arabia rally, write, protest, and ask? Because I lived there. Well, excuse me, because uh, I think I said previously, and brothers and sisters, please, uh, if a person makes a statement, first, uh, if, you, if you have a question, you have to ask me. If I'm a little long-winded, that's, my, that's, my, uh, that's a little bit of my priority, I think, my protocol or my uh, uh, preference. But just raise your hand and I'll recognize you. The other thing is, anyone that asks a question, uh, I'm not a stand-up comic here, so I'm not saying things uh, as a comedian. And we should be patient, tolerant, and we should be respectful. If a person asks a question or makes a statement that we don't agree with, we shouldn't laugh. The prophet didn't teach us that. We should be tolerant and listen to what she has to say, and I'll answer to the best of my ability. And I don't have all the answers. I have the answers from my experience, from my exposure, to the best of my ability. And I'm trying to be fair and objective. That is, where there's an indictment against Muslims, I'm going to say what I saw, and I'm going to agree. But that is not an indictment against Islam because Islam doesn't accept that. The punishment in Islam for a man prostituting a woman is death. Now you may say that's inhuman, but that's why 
There's a difference in Islam from Islamic constitution, Islamic civilization, and others because in Islam it's not tolerated. Now Muslims who do it are criminals. Muslim countries that do it are criminal countries and deviant countries, and there are many of them, definitely, but that's not an indictment against Islam. What I'm speaking about is, what is the treatment? And my sister, she asked, what is the treatment of women according to the Quran? Women are mothers, they are sisters, they are daughters, they are wives, they are human beings, and they have the same rights in the sight of God as men have. And socially, their rights are even more than men in some cases because they are the hands that prepare the future generations. Now that's what the Quran tells us. Now if Muslims don't act that way in some cases, that's not an indictment against Islam. I suppose all I objected to was the uh, suggestion that women well, I only single it out. I only single it out because Western countries have the most glaring statistics of prostitution. Western civilization have the most glaring statistics of pedophilia. Western civilization have the most glaring statistics when it comes to the addiction of drugs. Western civilization has the most glaring statistics when it comes to the addiction of alcohol. Western civilization has the most glaring statistics when it comes to people addicted to cigarette smoking. And the cigarette production started in Western civilization. Western civilization has the most glaring statistics when it comes to murders, homicides. Western civilization has the most glaring statistics when it comes to armed robbery. Western civilization have the most glaring statistics when it comes to children born out of wedlock, children that don't know who their father is. Western civilization has the most glaring statistics when it comes to people who are locked up in industrial complexes called prisons. Western civilization, and I only point out Western civilization because they claim to be the champions of human uh, human justice, social justice. Uh, they claim to be that, and they go all over the world, policing the world, or polluting the world, whichever we want to say. Now, if they didn't make such claims, I wouldn't point them out. I would simply say that these are statistics that we find everywhere in the world, but these are statistics that found themselves most glaring in the sophistication of Western civilization. And in most cases, began, the in industry of it began, and then was transported into those countries. And you only have to be a student of history to know that. You only have to be a student of history to understand that. So I'm being critical where I think it's necessary to be critical only to say that it is not fair for people who consider themselves to be educated, sophisticated, westernized, modern, or whatever the case might be, while it's evident that Western civilization, I'll give you another statistic that you need to know. Suicide, suicide is it's in its highest, highest rate in the Western civilizations than it is anywhere in the world. These are people who should be satisfied, happy, stable, educated, but they're not. Disparagement, depression, anxiety, and suicide is witnessed more in the Western civilizations than anywhere in the world. Now these are sociological statistics. I don't say that this, these, this doesn't exist in other places, but why should it exist in the place where people are supposed to be the champions of human rights? social justice, who are offering to the world their new world order, and who say that women are mistreated in other places, yet the greatest disparagement, where in the world do you find naked women on a billboard, which even children can see, selling a candy bar? I mean, it's just absurd. 
if we want to talk about oppression and the, uh, the indignity and indecency and the oppression and exploitation of women from the time that they are young, nowhere is it personified greater than it is in the Western civilization. <laughs>